now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for September 16th. Well, we are down to a little bit of a quieter pattern now that Shen 2 is the only tropical system uh, still with tropical char characteristics at this point. The 16th day of the month with Nicholas also remnant low in southwestern Louisiana. 67 storms have formed so far this year. Switching it over to the Atlantic, it's day 108 of the Atlantic hurricane season. And of course, Nicholas is a remnant low now at this point. There's also Invest 95L with a 90% chance of formation. 96L with the 70% chance of formation, and another AOI that could be forming in the Eastern Pacific in almost a week. It's day 124 of Eastern Pacific hurricane season, nothing is active at this time, and that trend is going to be continuing for the foreseeable future as there are no model indications for quite some time here. In the Western Pacific, you can see Shant 2, which is a tropical storm uh, still, and looking a lot better than it should. Uh, there's also another area of interest which uh, involves some of the moisture left behind by 97W, which rapidly erased itself from existence, 10% uh, chance at this time. In the North Indian Ocean, there's nothing going on now that the depression that we had, Bob 03, uh, has moved further inland and cannot really get a traceable center at this point, so therefore final fixes have been declared, and nothing for the foreseeable future for right now. Here's the Atlantic satellite imagery, and you can see Nicholas as it continues to bring heavy rain to the south, and of course there's also 95L which is struggling to produce the convection necessary for it to get tropical cyclone status, and 96L which is already producing gale force winds at the moment, could become a tropical system in a few days, uh, if not soon. Um, in the Eastern Pacific, not much going on. There's practically little to talk about given the fact that the cloud activity is uh, really not much here. Uh, not, there's pretty much just not much to say, period, about the Eastern Pacific except for, you know, the cloud activity going on near the Central Pacific. In the Western Pacific, you can see what's going on with uh, Shant 2 there as it continues to, for some reason, look better despite its stalling nature. Uh, it is expected to turn extra tropical eventually. And then, of course, there is what was left of 97W, which just uh, vanished, I guess, in terms of all convection and everything associated with it. Uh, not something that you typically see often, where something just dies that quickly. In the North Indian Ocean, you can see what's left of Babo 3 dissipating, uh, or at least in the process of dissipating, in India now, uh, as it continues to head towards the north-northwest. Other than that, monsoonal activity is going on as normal. In the uh, floater imagery, we're still focusing it on Nicholas as it continues to be uh, a significant flood threat across the uh, Gulf states, of course. Uh, six to ten inches of rain have already fallen. There's been areas that I've seen over a foot, uh, potentially up to two feet of rain already. It's been quite the storm for sure. In the eastern Pacific, we're looking at what's going on with the sea surface temperatures, which remain around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, although there are some areas that are starting to dip below near 27. The Gulf of Mexico is no longer filled with places at 30 degrees Celsius, and of course the cold pool from Larry still remains. Other than that, the Caribbean and the Western Atlantic remains around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, although some 28s have sneaked in a little more across the Caribbean and Gulf Coast. In the North Indian Ocean, you can see the temperatures are around 28 to 29 in the Bay of Bengal. As you head into the Arabian Sea, those temperatures start out around 28, but those drop to around 25 to 26. And as you head into the Western Pacific, the temperatures are around 28 to 29 for a majority of the basin. And then, of course, there are some areas that are around 30 in the Philippine Sea and near the equator. The Southern Hemisphere looking rather cool as well, as to be expected for this time of year. Moving on over to the sea surface temperature anomalies. Uh, of course, we'll kick it off with the Atlantic first. We can still see the cold pool left behind by the Gulf Storms and, of course, Larry there. Other than that, the Atlantic is above average. In the Eastern Pacific, it remains spotty as the La Nina continues to develop. And in the Western Pacific, it's pretty much above average for the uh, entire basin except for uh, south of the Hainan Peninsula where Kansan stalled for quite some time. On this day in 1999, there was Hurricane Floyd, which was making a Category 1 landfall in North Carolina, of course, so it would be one of the most significant storms to impact the state in 
the East Coast in general, would later get retired and replaced with Franklin for 2005. There was also Gert, which was an upper end Category 4 hurricane that was traversing in the Atlantic. And then of course there was also Tropical Storm Anne, which was a relatively short-lived tropical storm in the Western Pacific. Our On This Day products can be found at Cyclone History. The tag is below on the blue bottom bar there. So with that, the next name in the Atlantic, we could be seeing the next two names soon, is Odette followed by Peter. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking out for Pamela and Rick. And in the Central Pacific, it's Adventure Time. Come on, grab your friends. You will be seeing a very long wait for Hone. In the Western Pacific, we're looking out for Diamnu, followed by Mindul. And in the North Indian Ocean, we're still looking out for Gulab and Shaheen. Moving it over to the Southern Hemisphere, specifically the Southwestern Indian Ocean. The next name here is Ana, followed by Batsire. In the Australian region, we're looking out for Patty and Ruby. And in the South Pacific, it's Cody. We'll be back for another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.